be there for cause you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away if you lay bare striving for the right then you shall wear a golden crown you know that you shall shall wear a crown Oh, when the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet sounds, you shall, shall wear a crown. And oh, you shall wear a golden crown. And be not like the foolish virgins then, for he's coming. But we know not when, just keep your lamp all trimmed and burning bright. Then you shall wear a golden crown. You know that you shall wear a, shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet sounds, you shall, shall wear a crown, and oh, you shall wear a golden crown, and if at last you hold out to the hymn, you know Jesus is an everlasting friend. If you stay within the church he found, then you shall wear a golden crown. You know that you shall, shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds, just when the trumpet sounds, you shall, shall wear a crown, and oh, you shall wear a golden crown, and if you fight the good old fight of fame, and with Run the Christian race when you lay your gospel armor down. Then you shall wear a golden crown. You know that you shall, shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sound, you shall, shall wear a crown. And oh, you shall wear a golden crown. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye close our gracious glorious wondrous marvelous heavenly father from whom all blessings flow and to whom all praises go we your children come into your presence this morning some stumbling and staggering some fumbling and bumbling but we come wounded and weary but we come knowing that you can still do for us what we cannot do for ourselves so this morning we come to thank you for last night's rest for this morning's rising and thank you oh God for allowing us to assemble ourselves together in this place that we might experience your presence in worship. We've been around long enough to know your presence makes the difference. It's your presence that turns our tears to cheers and our fears to faith. And 
So we ask this morning, oh God, that you might make yourself known in this place. Move in your mercy and grant us your grace. Go on and do you. Touch somebody. Help somebody. Bless somebody. Strengthen somebody. Save somebody. Just do you. And we know, oh God, we will be benefited and we will be blessed. Now, oh God, as we come down to the preaching moment, just as you've already spoken to me, now please, God, speak through me to this, your people. Don't let me be in the way of somebody hearing from heaven. Somebody needs you, Lord. Right up in here this morning, somebody needs you to speak to them. Speak to their conditions, speak to their situations, speak to their hurts, to their habits, even to their hangups. We need you to talk to us this morning. Oh, we need you to talk to us this morning. We need you to speak over us like you did over nothing, and nothing became something. Speak, Lord. We're ready to hear. Speak, Lord. We will obey. Just have your own way. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. While we're waiting, yielded and still, go ahead and get yourself some glory, even as you do us some good. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus, our conquering Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless my father's children. We greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. Anybody in here know something about Jesus' joy? I got two over here. Is that, do I got two right here? Do I got two over here? All I, all I need is six. I can go on if I got six. What a wonderful privilege it is to stand in your company again. God is a mighty good God. I thought I was going to have some help right there. I said, God is a mighty good God. And he's worthy of our worship. And we are delighted to be again in the company of our, one of our dearest friends. Uh, Brother Mike, we, we want you to know we have uh, consistently covered you with prayer that God might continue to, to build you up. Don't let me hear y'all not doing right by Mike. <laughs> I'll tell my daddy on you. <laughs> Amen. You don't want to be on the wrong side of my daddy. Amen. Amen. I know you're going to take good care of him. And, and I know that. I know that for an absolute fact. So we, we appreciate, we certainly appreciate all the, your kindnesses. Uh, shown us uh, particularly the way you have uh, loved on our son uh, we don't take that for granted we thank you so so very much you got your Bible if you don't have your Bible do you have your device <laughs> amen we don't even hear pages turning anymore we amen amen Matthew chapter 15 Verse 21, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. The tag I wish to place on this text from which to teach at this time is an unusual model of magnificent motherhood. An unusual model of magnificent motherhood. One of the, I think you'll agree with me, especially all of you beautiful mothers. I think you will agree with me. One of the most demanding, but one of the most rewarding jobs in all of the world is being a godly mother. 
I thought I was going to have some help right there. If you have or if you had a godly mother whose example and encouragement to you has made an indelible imprint and impact on your life, you are blessed indeed. Thank God. I said thank God. Thank God for mothers who taught us about God. Thank God for mothers who taught us about doing what's right. Thank God for mothers who, who taught us about what life is really all about. We who are blessed with or have been blessed with a godly mother, you know, we've learned so much from our mothers. Our mothers teach us about logic. They say stuff like, if you fall out of that tree and break your neck, don't come running to me. <laughs> Logic. Our mothers teach us about religion. They say stuff here, you better pray that comes out. They teach us about, at least mine, y'all part, yeah, y'all part. But my mother taught me about time travel. Boy, if you don't straighten out, I'm going to slap you into the middle of next week. I wish I had a praying crowd. We meet many magnificent mothers in scripture. We meet Eve, the mother of us all. We meet Hannah, the mother of that great prophet Samuel. We meet Elizabeth, the mother of that wilderness preacher of curious diet and dress. We know him as John the Baptizer. We meet Mary, the mother of Jesus. Today, I don't want to speak to any of these magnificent mothers. Instead, I want to use an unusual model of motherhood in the person of this nameless pagan mother in our text. Is it all right? As we unpack the passage to uncover the principles, there are two truths threaded into the tapestry of the text. They form the substance of the sermon. They offer the homiletical hinges on which this message swings. I want you to notice the painful desperation. And then I want you to notice the persistent determination. And we'll ask God to bless that thought this morning to our lives. Notice the painful desperation. For the first time in the ministry of Jesus, he steps beyond the borders of Israel into Gentile territory. Perhaps, perhaps, this is a subtle suggestion that Jesus has come to be the savior of the whole world. Anybody in here other than me happy that, that the gospel is for whosoever will? I said he has a whosoever will gospel. Not just the rich. Also the poor. That gets me in. Anybody else in here? Not just the wealthy, but also for those who are without. It's a whosoever will invitation. Not just the educated, but the uneducated. Not, not just the famous, also the forgotten. Not just the ends, but also the outs. Not just those who think they are too good. The, the invitation is also for those who know they are too bad. It's a whosoever will invitation. I'm happy about that. Like I'm happy all by myself. Jesus in the text is attempting to have some downtime. He goes into a house. He doesn't want anybody to know 
where he is, he's, he's, he, he's, he wants some downtime. But he couldn't stay secluded long. He encounters a Canaanite woman. In, in Mark's gospel, she's, she's called the Syrophoenician woman. It's the, same, it's the same incident. What leads us this morning to examine her is that this woman was a mother who was desperately troubled about what was going on in the life of her daughter. Consider a moment her hurt. This woman was desperate because her beloved daughter was demon possessed. Her daughter was completely dominated and defeated by demons. That, that demon domination caused this mother some real desperation. Okay, you ain't feeling that. I, I think I ought to remind you that uh, this daughter ain't the only child being dominated by the devil. Uh oh, y'all ain't gonna help me, are you? Uh, I ought to remind somebody that the devil is after our children. I said the devil is after our children. Uh, the devil and everybody on his payroll is after our children. The devil wants to disrupt their faith walk with God. The devil wants to corrupt their thinking and decision making. The devil wants to interrupt their journey of joy to the king's palace. I declare the devil is after our children. The signs of his attacks are all around us. I, I think I ought to tell somebody. They're going into eighth grade right now, counting your boys, so they can find out how many prisons they need to build. Did you hear what I just said? The devil is after our children, a gang and go and drug culture that specializes in early graves. Continue to paint the pavement crimson with the blood of the young. The devil is after our children. Young black African Americans from the ages of 15 to 34 experience the highest rates of gun violence and homicides across all demographics. The devil is after our children. Black folks are 10 times more likely than white Americans to die by homicide. The devil is after our children. Did you hear what I just said? Black Americans are three times more likely than white Americans to be fatally shot by police who we pay to protect us. Y'all ain't gonna help me, but I preach like I preach. When you preach, you do you. What's troubling to me, what's troubling to me is that with all that the devil is throwing at our children, many parents, not y'all, y'all going to heaven, this is God's country, but many parents don't seem to be nearly as concerned as times would warrant. Many parents respond to this alarming crisis with shameful indifference or awful insensitivity. Sometimes I wonder, where is our desperation? We got 14, 15, 16 year olds out there jacking cars like they playing with toys. Where is our desperation? We got parents now who won't even encourage their children to come to church. Because their child said they didn't feel like it. My mama never cared one whit about how I felt. I 
I'm not sure my feelings enter into the discussion now. Did you hear what I just said? So often we have empty Bible class rooms, but we got full prisons. So often parents fail to exemplify their own faithfulness. You know, the Bible says, Ephesians 6, 4, we ought to bring our children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. But honey, you can't bring nobody up if you ain't already up. Look like somebody ought to look at somebody and say, are you up? I said, you cannot bring anybody up if you're not already up. Let me, let me share some constructive rules for disciplining your children. Anybody, anybody want to hear this? I know some of y'all are, are more sophisticated than I am. And you believe in timeout. My mama didn't do timeout. My mama did knockout. Anybody else? Oh, I wish you had a praying crowd. Let me, let me show you some constructive rules. Here's rule number one. Examine all the evidence before you bring the charges. Don't punish your child in frustration for something you're not even sure they did. Second, make sure justice is swift. Don't force your child to sit on death row for hours. <laughs> Somebody ought to help me up in here. Hoping to be pardoned by the governor. Somebody ought to. If they need to be disciplined, don't put it off too long. Number three. Make sure the sentence fits the crime. Are y'all feeling that? Don't be overly harsh on them when they commit misdemeanors. But don't be too lenient on them when they commit felonies. I wish I had a praying crowd. Number four, don't discipline out of your anger. Your discipline is not designed just to be punitive. It has to be corrective and instructive. Punishing your children in your wrath will not produce desired outcomes. That's Paul's notion, don't provoke your children to wrath. Finally, always love your children before, during, and after the case has been adjudicated. Love must permeate every act of discipline. Your desire cannot be to hurt them. You're your parent. It's, you're supposed to be. That ain't even a word, supposed to. You're supposed to be trying to help them. Y'all having a hard time with this? That's her hurt. Notice, notice her hope. This, this nameless woman. So hope because of the condition of her daughter. She only had one hope. Verse 25 tells us in Mark's gospel, chapter 7, immediately a woman who's little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him or oh, Jesus and came and fell down at his feet you know the Bible is suggesting that there was hope for this desperate woman because she heard of him and maybe she heard what Jesus did for that nameless paralytic who was brought 
to Jesus by four friends. She heard of him. Maybe she heard how Jesus healed the man with a withered hand. She heard of him. And maybe she heard how Jesus stilled a storm out there on the troubled sea. I don't know what she heard. But the Bible says she heard of him. Maybe, maybe she heard about how Jesus healed a wild man whose mind had gotten off track, who was so completely defeated and dominated by demons. He was living out there in a cemetery. He said, my name, singular, is Legion, for we, plural, are many, some kind of schizophrenia. I don't know what she heard, but the Bible says she heard of him. Maybe she heard how Jesus healed Jairus' daughter, even from the dead. The Bible says she heard of him. Whatever she heard, I don't know what it was, but it was enough to, to give her hope so that she brought her baby to Jesus. Oh, my brothers and sisters, there's always hope. When you get your situation to Jesus. There's always hope when we get our children to Jesus. Oh, is there a mother somewhere desperate enough to take their concerns about their children to Jesus? Our children are grown. I almost said grown and gone. They ain't all gone. But they're all grown. But I'm still taking them to Jesus. Mama, there is hope when you take your child to Jesus. He can bring a wandering wayward child back home. Yes, he can. There's always hope when you bring your children to Jesus. He can put a protective hedge around them when they are not in your presence. I said, there's always hope when you take your children to Jesus. He can keep them from seen and unseen dangers. Yes, there's always hope. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, yes. There's always hope when you get your children to Jesus. Well, the second issue is, notice her persistent determination. This woman acts on what she heard about this wonder-working hero from the hood. You know, he grew up in Nazareth. That's the hood. Y'all hear what I just said? Jesus, our hero from the hood. She, she heard about him. And so she brings her child to Jesus because of her desperate situation. She's determined. I, I want you to notice a strange refusal. The lady brings her case to Jesus. There... Her daughter is demon possessed. She, did you read it? She pleads with Jesus to, to, to do something for a child. She, she pleads for mercy. She doesn't ask that he base her dealing with her on what she merits. She's not seeking what she deserves. She's an outcast. She's a part of She's not, she's not a part of God's covenant people. In fact, she, she's a part of the ancestral enemies of God's people. The Canaanites, who were supposed to be wiped off the map when, when Israel first came into the land. But the people of God did not completely obey. The Bible says she cries out to God. That's an interesting word. Chryzo is the Greek term. 
It's an imperfect tense verb. It means she kept on crying out to the Lord for mercy. And her pleading got on the nerves of the disciples. Oh, Jesus. And they said, Jesus, send her away. She's getting on our nerves. That's a Jones translation. It's easy for them to talk about send her away. Ain't nothing wrong with their babies. Did you hear what I just that You know, there are some people get uncomfortable when you make your cry. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. They can't do nothing for you, honey. Make your cry anyway. There are people who are so completely devoid of compassion that it upsets them if you cry out for help. Incredibly, Jesus, who's the man of mercy, initially doesn't even respond at all to her plea. This is a passage that's, that can be troubling because that don't sound like Jesus. I mean, Jesus is the man of mercy. Am I right or am I right? Those are your options. Am I right or am I right? Jesus is a man of mercy. He hears our cry. He pities our groan. He dries our tears. He heals our hurts. I said Jesus is a man of mercy. This doesn't sound like Jesus be ignoring this woman who's crying out for help. And then, and then, and then when Jesus finally speaks, he reminds this anguished woman that she has no claim to his compassion. She has no right to his resources. First of all, she's a woman. And at that time, that was bad enough. Help me, Lord Jesus. And then, she was also a Gentile. And worse, she was a Canaanite. I mean, she had three strikes. Everybody knows three strikes, you out. Somebody ought to help me up in here. She was a Canaanite, corrupted by Baal worship in the city of Tyre. You Bible students know that's where Jezebel lived. And that's where Baal worship originated. Uh, this woman had a lot going against her. She comes to Jesus, even though she has so much going against her. She pleads with Jesus. And for a moment, it looked like she wasn't going to receive any help. For a moment, it looked like that no mercy was going to be offered for her desperate situation. Listen, as Mark shares with us this incident, in Mark chapter 7, 27, and he said to her, let the children first be fed, for it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Good God, Jesus, is this Jesus? Now, before you walk away getting this twisted, it sounds harsh, except it's coming from the lips of Jesus. So that means it can't be harsh. So maybe we have to do some more work on it. The word that's translated dog is not the word for the main G street dog. Right, which would be how most Jews would describe Gentiles. Jesus uses the word kinarion, and it refers to beloved house pets. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? That's why study is important. But the point that Jesus is making is that it was not time for him to deal with the Gentiles. His first responsibility was to the Jews. The, 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 the Bible uh, 
remember, tells us that salvation is of the Jews. Now, Jesus knows what he's going to do. Uh, and sometimes Jesus delays in order to test how serious we are. Jesus tests this woman's faith. I, I, I think I ought to tell somebody. Sometimes when you cry out to God, that doesn't necessarily mean you're serious. It just means you're hurting right now. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. But I ought to tell you, a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. I, I, I think you ought to post that one. I, I said a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. And so Jesus tests her faith. He was known for doing stuff like that. You remember his, one of his best friends, Lazarus, died? And the sisters cried out to him for help. And the Bible says, John 11, he stayed away two more days. Oh, good God Almighty. Uh, and, 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 and we sometimes say when, when he finally showed up, he showed up too late for the funeral. But I say to you, how can a God who made time ever be late? Whenever he shows up, honey, it's right on time. Somebody used to say, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, notice the spectacular response. She said, okay, I, I get that to you about the dogs and all. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Uh, are y'all feeling her, her determination? She, she's concerned about her daughter. And she ain't fixing to leave until she get the help that she needs. That's, that, it's strange theology, but that's the sentiment of the song. I cried and I cried, uh, I, and I wouldn't be contented until I found the Lord. She says, I'll just take the crumbs. I, I, don't, I, I don't deserve anything, but I'm willing to take the crumbs. Parents, when you get serious enough, to go to God in humble submission and ask for help, particularly when it comes to your children, that'll get God's attention. Did you hear what I said? We ought to go to God for our children declaring, Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. And I'll do what you want me to do. But I just need you to bless my children. Anybody feeling that? I need you to bless my children. Well, she said, I'll take the crumbs. That, 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 that's, a, that's a word that means bits and pieces. I, I'm satisfied, she says, with the smallest, littlest thing. She recognized that even the slightest crumb of this power will be sufficient enough to drive the demon out of her daughter. She's, she's saying, anyway, you bless me, Lord. Oh, I'm feeling that already. Ah, ah, I'll be satisfied. Sometimes uh, we, we, we talk about, oh, Jesus sometimes says, oh, ye, of little faith but to this woman a pagan she said he says she had great faith and in response to her faith Jesus drives the demon out of her daughter I, I believe my brothers and sisters he can do that for us oh yes he can I believe in response to our faith as parents, 
God will drive demons out of our children. And you know he'll get the devil out of us too. Oh, preach that thing, Jones. I said he'll get the devil out of us too. Do I have any help in here? This mother persisted and insisted and consistent faith paid off. I declare your faith will pay off as well. If you just go to God in your desperation, maybe it's not your children, maybe it's your condition, maybe it's your situation. I don't know whatever it is. I do know if you're desperate enough to take your situation to Jesus, he can do something about it. Yeah, do I have any help in here? I said he can do something about it. Yes! Oh, yes! Hallelujah, yes! He can do something about it. I love the phrase. I return to it and I, I quickly bid you good, good day. The Bible says she heard of him. That's why she brought him, her daughter to Jesus. I wonder, have you heard of him? Maybe I ought, to, I ought to just ought to introduce them to you. Let me give it to you. This, this was really a suggestion, a conclusion, conclusion suggestion I got from a Christian. Let me, let me introduce them to you. Steve Harvey style. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and my great honor to introduce to you someone who needs no introduction. He's been known to be older than his mother. And he is older as his father. He's unique in every way. He is distinguished in every aspect. He's different at every point. He's distinct in every case. He's special in every instance. He's original in every feature. He's unusual in every trait. He's a burden bearer. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. Uh, his name is Jesus. And he's mighty to save. If you don't mind, and if you are able, ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet. Put your hands together and show your love for Jesus. Mary's baby, John's Lamb of God, my God, my strength, my hope, my power. Show your love to Jesus, tear dryer, burden lifter, heart fixer, way maker, promise keeper. Show your love, show your love, show your love to Jesus. He's able. Somebody, somebody need him while you're standing. Somebody, somebody needs him this morning. Don't make me beg, don't, don't make me beg you to do what you knew, you know you ought to do. Are you desperate enough to come to him? Come this morning by faith in Jesus Christ. By repenting of your sins. By confessing Jesus to be the son of God. By being baptized in water for the remission of all your sins. And leave here a child of the king. Maybe I'm talking to some mother and you're concerned about your family. Come on and bring it to Jesus. Prayer still works. Look at somebody and tell them, prayer works, baby. I said, prayer still works. Maybe it's a father who wants to be a better leader for his family. Come on and bring it to Jesus. Prayer still works. Uh, we're going to invite you to come while we sing a, a song of invitation. Uh, we sing, you come, and we'll pray. Come right now while we sing. I know the Lord will make a way. Come right now. 
for Come on right now. me. Come on and bring your desperation to Jesus. The Lord Come on right now. Will make Come on right now. Bring your desperation to Jesus. Come on. If I walk Come on. in heaven's light. Come on. Shine the rock. Come on. And do the right. Bring your desperation to Jesus. I know the Lord. He'll make a way. We'll make a way. He'll make a way. Is there somebody who'll come? Somebody else who'll come. Somebody else who'll come. Somebody else who'll come. Somebody else who'll come. We're waiting for you. God bless you as you come. Who else? Somebody else who'll come. Are you desperate enough? Are you desperate enough to bring your case to Jesus? Somebody else who'll come. Oh, he'll fix it for you. Oh, he'll fix it for you. Oh, he'll fix it for you. And do the right. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will make a way for me. The Lord has said. Go teach the word to all the world. The Lord has said, Go teach the word to all the world. If I walk in heaven's light, shine the I know the Lord will make a way for me. Amen. Amen and amen. You know, it's been a while. Brother John is some kind of preacher, y'all. He he know how to take a message and just dissolve it. I mean, I mean, thank you, Brother John. Thank you. We had those that come down. We had those that are standing. And I have a one little request. An unusual model of a magnificent motherhood. What a woman, what a woman. I had one in my life. What about you? She went through some painful situations, and then she was persistent, as he spoke on today. Uh, thank you again, Brother John. I, when he walked in, I told him, this man looked like you're getting younger. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, but he looked good. He looks good. I have one prior request and from Sister Angela Wooten of Abaca, and she's uh, asking for a prayer request for the Wooten Phillip family during the passing of Barbara Wooten Phillip. Please keep the Wooten Phillip, Kathy Smith family in your prayers. Arrangement has not been set yet, and they are pending. But I think we all could be standing this morning. So let us go to our Father in prayer. Father God, we come to Father. We thank you for this day, dear Father. We thank you for this priest servant, dear Father, that came, dear Father, and spoke a message this morning that touched each and every last one of us, dear Father. That we all have had a mother in our life have been through painful situation and was persistent, dear Father. Dear Father, we thank you for all you have done. We thank you for those that came down, dear Father. We pray, dear Father, now for the church as a whole. Dear Father, we ask you to be with us. Touch our hearts, guide us, comfort us, 
in every way that you see fit, dear Father. We ask you to be with those that are standing, dear Father. Standing in the need of prayer. You know what they're standing for, dear Father. We ask that you be there for them. You know every situation in each one of us. You know what all our needs are. We just ask you to be with each, each one of us, dear Father, individually and collectively, dear Father. Dear Father, we pray for the Philip, the Wooten, the Kathy, the Smith. Be with them in the time of bereavement, dear Father. Comfort them as you know how. And be, be, be with us that we'll be there for them, dear Father, in the time of need. Dear Father, we ask you to just keep your loving arms around us. Go with us through the rest of this day, the rest of our life. Guide us in the way that you have us to go. We ask for forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper in Gethsemane alone. Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me by the one who did atone uh, just to show his matchless grace Jesus suffered for the race in Gethsemane alone. Oh, what love, matchless love. Oh, what love for me was shown. sisters and to all of our mothers I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day and now we have come down to this part of our worship service where we partake of the Lord's body and blood but first let us prepare our minds and hearts and let us look back to the cross where Jesus hung bled and died and rose again <clears throat> on the third day Jesus, when he walked the earth with his 12 disciples in the upper room, he took them to the upper room to, to show them how, when they took the Lord's Supper, to remember him. Paul went on to record these teachings in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup. And after he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord's death and suffering until he comes. But whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore let a man examine himself. So let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh in an unworthily manner, eateth and drinketh judgment to his own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among us, and many are asleep. Therefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, tarry one for the other. We also find scripture how often we should take the Lord's Supper. We turn to Acts chapter 20 in the verse 7. For upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow. But he continued his speech until midnight, and there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Let us give thanks. O most holy and divine and righteous Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come, Heavenly Father, with hearts fixed on you, Heavenly Father, going back to the cross where we see where you gave your life for the sins of the whole world. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we may partake of this bread and that you would bless it, dear God, and this cup, that you would bless this cup, which represents your shedded blood, which was shed for many. We ask that we would take of it with pure minds and clean hearts. These and many other blessings we do ask in your darling Son, Jesus Christ's name, that is all say, Amen. This brings us down to another very important part of worship and it's time to give according to the scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 and 2, the Bible teaches us that we should give upon the first day of the week. And the Bible uh, also says and that everything belongs to God. And we came into this world with nothing and we were going to leave with nothing, according to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 7. And the Bible says in Acts uh, 20 and 35, the Bible says it is more blessed to give than receive. Let us give thanks. Most kind and gracious Father, yes, again, we thank you for this time that you allowed us to give as back to you. And we just pray that this offering will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This we ask it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again. Happy, Mo Happy Mother's Day, and we certainly have had a, a great day this morning. Amen. Certainly want to thank Brother Jones for the great message and, and, the, and the reflection time that he gave me. I can recall the, the last slap that my mother gave me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you for that moment of reflection. <laughs> Just
just want to have a uh, few announcements. Uh, certainly want to thank the congregation for your uh, love that was reflected for the Rolling Fork Project on, on last Sunday. Uh, for the church, we, uh, uh, with your support and help, we were able to give $4,000 to that effort. Uh, this morning in Bible class, we talked about uh, recuperation, and that's what we're able to do is to help the, uh, the person there to get back in her home and get some normalcy. So we want to, leadership, want to thank you all for, for your efforts at supporting, supporting uh, the Rolling Fork Project. Before we go into announcements, uh, I, we have visitors. We want to certainly recognize our visitors. If there are visitors to my left, your right, if you'd like to stand and say who you are and where you're visiting from, we'll be more than glad to accept you at this, at this time. Is any to my left, your right? Any visitors? All right. Okay, do we have any in the center? If you'd like to stand and tell us who you are and where you're from, and you can do it this time in the center section. Go ahead. All right, let's welcome her. Welcome to the Boulevard. All right. Thank you. Are there any more in the center area here that would like to share? All right. What about those to my right, your left? Any to my right, your left? Again, thanks to all of our visitors for being here. Certainly, we would love to have you back the next opportunity you have to come and, be and worship here with us here on the Boulevard. Uh, we also meet here on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for Bible study if you'd like to come and be a part of that. So, again, welcome to the Boulevard, and we're certainly glad to have, to have you here with us today. Amen. Announcements. Uh, the latest day will be this Saturday at a.m., 8 a.m. All, all ladies, please plan to attend. We also need all of our brothers to, to be present to assist with security and parking. Now, brothers, you heard the call. <laughs> you heard the call. So all of us that can be, uh, that are available, we certainly, if you can't be here all the time, be here some of the time and, uh, to, to help out and, and, and be a part of that. So we're looking, looking forward to all of our brothers being here on, uh, on next Saturday to help out with the ladies. And I know they're excited that you You've seen the teapots and all the stuff going on. They're looking for a big tea that'll be a part of here in uh, uh, at the Boulevard on Saturday. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, this is graduation season, and we would like to say congratulations to Javon Brock will be graduating from Central High School uh, this Saturday, May 18th. Congratulations, Avon. <laughs> Ladies, all of you all uh, look nice in your pink rose today. If you didn't get an opportunity to get one, please stop by the visitor's desk on your way out. And, and also, we have uh, uh, our token of appreciation for uh, for our visitors, please stop by the desk if you did not get your visitors cup with the information and, and things that we share about here, what we do here at Boulevard. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. God be all the glory. Because it's only by His grace that I'm standing here today. I'm blessed. Bless you. you. You get to a point in life to where uh, God is good is not just a cliche. You know that to be a fact particularly when you come face to face with your own mortality. You know that God is good. And he's good not just some of the time. God is good all the time. Boulevard is so good to see you and to look out.
upon all of your beautiful smiling faces. Uh, I just wanted to come this morning and thank you so much for all that you have done and all that you are doing. We have just been overwhelmed with the outpouring of love. Uh, mailbox has just been flooded with cards. I'm sure our mailman is trying to figure out what's going on at our house. Just still getting, still getting cards, gifts, uh, care packages, just all kinds of wonderful acts of love uh, from this great Boulevard family, uh, brothers and sisters from across the city and from across the brotherhood. We're just grateful uh, to God for uh, such great people. I am privileged. And I'm blessed. I know there are a lot of great churches out there. But I, I'm privileged and blessed to preach for the greatest church in this brotherhood. There is no church. I ain't trying to hate on you. There is no church like the boulevard. <laughs> boulevard, we love you. I'll oh, bless you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, we, we're grateful for uh, all of the great men here uh, who have, uh, in, in our absence, just taking the ball uh, and run with it. Boulevard has not missed a beat. Amen. 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 To these elders, uh, for, for you stepping up and doing what needs to be done. We thank God for you, the teaching and, and many other things that you're doing. Uh, for all the preaching. It's been some preaching up in here for the last month. Amen. 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 Brother Sherman Ford uh, has just stepped up to the plate. Amen. Uh, last, I guess week before last, he was preaching, and I'm like, okay, he get a little volume in his voice. <laughs> get loud. I'm like, okay, I see you, sir. I see you. I see you. But just thank God for him. Uh, talented young man and, and uh, great preacher. And we thank God for how he is using him in a special way. Last week, Brother Ron White, our dear friend, uh, from the southeast side, did an outstanding job. And then uh, this morning, uh, of course, you know, when William Jones get up, uh, he just going to lose his mind. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Negro preaching like you're trying to move back to Memphis. <laughs> and I told him, you still ain't getting no key. <laughs> But he's still my friend. He's still my friend. I, I love him dearly. And I thank God for how he is using him uh, all across this brotherhood. And so always grateful to have he and Brenda uh, and the family back home. Uh, amen. Boulevard, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm doing good. So keep praying for us. We, we have a ways to go. Um, still have... Uh, Rehab ahead that we got to go through. Um, God is still good. God is still good. And I just want to take a moment to, uh, in a special way, to uh, thank the love of my life who has. <laughs> hadn't left my side through this whole ordeal. And you know, those vows that we take, sometimes we don't think about them. Uh, there, but there come a time in life when, uh, when you have to live up to them. And she has done that. She has done that. And so I just want her to know, and I said this to her privately, but I just want her to know publicly uh, how much I love her 
for loving me. So uh, keep praying for us. Pray for her. Uh, because uh, not only uh, have I had to go through some physical trauma, but she has had to go through some emotional yes, trauma. Because in just a matter of minutes, in one day, we went from zero to 120. Yeah. And still there. And so... Uh, lifestyle change has to, uh, you know, has to take place. Uh, but we are adjusting to that uh, because we serve a good God. Amen. And so keep praying for us, uh, Lord's willing. Uh, you know, I was sitting there and I am debating on whether or not I want to take all this good preaching. You know, if I want to take the rest of the year off. But... <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, I probably ain't gonna be able to get away with that. So, you know, just have Jones commute here once in a while. You know, him and Sherman swap out. Amen. But, uh, but keep praying for us. We, we, we're trying to get there slowly but surely. And uh, we, we know that uh, if it's God's will, uh, we, we're gonna be back to where we were. And so, Boulevard, thank you again. Uh, for being such loving people and, and, and loving on us uh, the way that you do. Uh, we would not have been able to get through this uh, without all the love that you uh, continue to give us. So thank you, God bless you. If I can believe it, I believe God can it. achieve it. So help me to show it so that others will know. Why don't you show up and give God some praise as we stand on our feet. Me and Brother Backus didn't have to struggle try to remember. <laughs> Brother Jackson did it right for us. So. Holy Spirit, dwell in me as we depart from here on this morning. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Just to touch my eyes that I might see. All your goodness, grace, and power. To stay beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Give me shelter, keep me fed. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Let's go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to even approach your throne, throne of grace and mercy on this morning. You've blessed us in so many ways. You've watched over us. You've kept us safe from a physical standpoint. We pray, Heavenly Father, and thank you for blessing us to come out this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth from a spiritual standpoint. <clears throat> we pray for all the many blessings that you've showered us with, the trials and tribulations, the turmoils that we've gone through. You still blessed us. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for the many lessons that you teach us through our lives. We thank you for being able to share with one another. We thank you for our Bible class department here. We pray, Heavenly Father, and thankful that all that we're able to share, learn, and grow as we continue to study your word. We're thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, that you came and, and let, allowed to die on that cruel cross that we may have this avenue of prayer on this morning. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, on this morning for the many mothers. Uh, we ask and pray that you continue to bless them, bless them with longevity. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those whose uh, mothers uh, that may not be here. We pray, Heavenly Father, and grateful that you bless us to be able to, uh, that you bless us, that we may be able to still live with them through the memories that we have of them in our lives. We pray, Heavenly Father, and thankful for Brother Jones that delivered the message on this morning and the example that was used. We pray, Heavenly Father, we can take that example and continue to grow closer to you. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, keeping Brother Jackson and restoring him to a reasonable portion of health and strength and actually continue to intervene in, uh, in that situation. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those on this morning that are just struggling with various things in their lives. We pray, Heavenly Father, that 
may bless them with comfort. As we depart from here on today, Heavenly Father, bless us in terms of uh, just place on our remembrance at all times who we are and to whom we belong. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we may all live our lives in an exemplary manner on this week, that others may be able to see Christ in us and ask, what must I do to be saved? We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we transpire, transpire, uh, go through all the aspects of, of our life on this week, that we continue to be an example. We ask you to bless us as we depart from here with traveling grace in Christ's name. Amen.